Looking to start your FM20 save with Man City and have absolutely no clue where to start. Well, this is exactly what this type of content is for. Hello everyone, it is Toby from TIJ Gaming and welcome to my Foot Manager 2020 Man City team guide. A quick, hopefully short snippet of my ideas on what to do with Man City and what to do if you're getting stuck at the start of your game. So we're going to go through, uh, through a lot of things today in a short period of time. So we're going to go through a few of the new features with Man City. So we're going to look at the club vision, what the club expects of you as a manager, the transfers in or out, uh, the squad and my preferred formation I'd probably play with Manchester City, the dynamics, so who to keep happy and who perhaps not to focus on as much, but who to really keep happy just to make sure the whole squad stays happy. Uh, transfer suggestions in terms of in and out. Uh, we're going to also look at the development centre as well, which looks at youth development for the future. So, here is the Man City squad. A very strong squad. The winners of the Premier League last year, of course. And, uh, yeah, a very, very strong squad. So first things first, we have the club vision, which is a new feature for FM20. It's been in the game before, but not as a solid feature. So we've got the club vision that Man City are looking for you to do. So as you'd really expect, really, Man City want to play possession football and entertaining football. On a scale of 1 to 4, that is preferred, 2 out of 4. So if you're the type of manager, no, I'm playing defensive football. The club aren't going to be bothered about it as much as some other things, which are, for example, working within the wage budget, which is a very important thing. So looking at the wage budget, the club's probably got about £400,000 a week to work with. Of course, with a budget adjustment, if you are completely new to football manager, you can move that right and left to adjust your transfer budget and wage budget to suit. Um, winning the Premier League, that's something that you've got to do this season or else you will get the sack. That is a really tough aim. That's something that, to be fair, Man City should be doing. Obviously, Liverpool are the big rivals, um, but in game, any of the big six, I think, could come um, to the forefront. So you've got to be really cheating the Premier League and the Champions League, which they want you to reach the final as well. That's a requirement. It's going to be a tough one if you're managing Man City, which is why um, you really want to get it right from the start. If, if you're taking too long to get adjusted, you could be out by Christmas, which makes things very tricky with coming into a club like this. And then the other three competitions, basically aren't really important. The Community Shield, they aren't bothered about it, even though it's only one game. Carabao Cup, oh well. Um, but they want you to reach the FA Cup final. But if you don't, as you can see, that's only a one out of four have been favoured. So as long as you do the other requirements, I'm sure that they won't mind if you drop out of the third round of the FA Cup. But that is the uh, club vision. Let's have a quick look at the transfers Man City have made in or out. Now, they've spent £149 million this summer and have dispensed of £61 million of talent. Now, the big two signings, uh, really, there's a few youngsters that are coming, which we won't really look at. We haven't got time to look at. Scott Carson, a real youngster. Don't really know why they've brought him in. Uh, but there you go. I think he's been a bit of goalkeeper back up, despite him going back on loads of Derby. But oh well. Um, so the big two signings are Rodri. Rodri being the defensive midfielder. Um, a long-term replacement, in my opinion, uh, for Fernandinho, who, of course, is 34 years old. Probably going to look at his last year uh, or two years at the club. But Rodri... Um, looks to be a very, very solid player. Only three stars at the moment, but has potential to improve to three and a half stars. And as you can see, there's no cons there. The club has spent £63 million on him, um, and he looks very good. His positioning, teamwork, and anticipation and decisions, looking at some of the best of his uh, attributes there. But he's looking to be a defensive midfielder and a very good signing for the Premier League champions. They've also brought in Joe Concello uh, from Zebra. Uh, he had been at Inter Milan before, so I'm surprised he went to Zebra. Uh, no, it's not Zebra. I was about to say, where the bloody hell is Zebra? It's, uh, that's that's uh, Juventus because, of course, uh, they haven't got the rights for the Juventus name this year. Football manager haven't. That's gone exclusively, I believe, to FIFA, if I'm correct. Uh, but, yeah, I, I funded. I didn't know it was at Zebra or whatever the hell Zebra is. I presume it was like a Brazilian club. But, anyway, <laughs> they bought him for £58 million. Um, again, a big signing really. He's going to challenge Kyle Walker for that right back position. A little bit of depth. I know, paying 58 million for a bit of depth. Um, and you're really going to have to choose between the two of these, to be quite honest. Uh, no need to bring anyone else in at right back because you've got two world class uh, right backs. And I should really, before the video, looked at Kyle Walker's stats. But just look at these two. Two very solid right backs. Of course, Kyle Walker, the bladder player originally uh, and initially, but he is four years older. Um, so I think that Joe Cancelo will definitely come into things uh, a little bit later. It looks like Cancelo is a little bit more of an attacking right back. But apart from that, a few youngsters you might want to look at out for. Zach, Zach Steffen, 24-year uh, old goalkeeper. Not really going to pull up massive strings, but he's a backup goalkeeper and looks fairly decent to be a backup figure. Uh, and a few more youngsters as well that you might want to have a look at. But uh, as you can see, some of these have really been bought in, I would say, um, just to make a bit of money off in the future. But you simply never know. 
Of course, the club captain's gone. That's a crucial thing. Vincent company has got to be a replacement at centre-back, and that's the problem the Man City have got so far this season. Mangal has already also gone. Uh, Danilo being the big money man, who's gone to Zebre or Juventus uh, as a right-back. So Man City did need that right-back, uh, and that was Joao yeah, Cancelo. Uh, Douglas Luiz has gone to Aston Villa, and Fabian Delph has gone to Everton. So even though particularly those two don't look like big departures, they are, to be fair, and uh, they are good depth players. So we need to look at bringing some players in for depth, but before we look at uh, who I'd recommend to bring in, which, to be quite honest, I might as well recommend now. Who on earth can you recommend to bring into this squad? I mean, look at this squad. It looks very solid. Maybe another centre-back, which you could choose at your leisure, to be quite honest. There's three centre-backs. You've got Otamendi, John Stones, um, and Laporte. But have we got any youngsters coming through out? Eric Garcia might be half-decent. Um, but just off the top of my head, really, thinking about centre-backs, who could we bring in at Man City? I mean, they could attract anybody, and they've got the money to attract anybody. Um, but my advice would be to someone, if they were quite young, maybe somebody at perhaps 25 maximum. Um, just looking at the list of people here, we could have Marquinhos, maybe Samuel and Titi, maybe try and get somebody like Eric Eric Dyer uh, or Kurt Zuma, or perhaps we'd like a Nathan Ake. Somebody who might not be too expensive. But Jonathan Tarr is always a cheap one in foot manager games. Um, but it depends how much you're looking to spend. Kim, ben, Kim, Kim, Dede, Kim Pembe, if I can get my words out right. He is a very good player uh, for his age. Well, so I'll, I'll actually recommend him. So Kim, Kim Pembe shouldn't be a massive amount of money. Uh, again, 23 years old. Be tricky to prize him away from PSG. But a very solid player. Uh, and has age on his side as well. But that's really your own opinion who you'd like to sign there. Because I'd be quite happy with that centre-back uh, free at the moment. It's just for future reference, really. You might want to bring somebody who's a little bit younger in um, and see how you get on there. But uh, apart from that position, the squad is very uh, well looking in terms of depth. If you look at the reports, uh, in terms of squad depth, it looks pretty good. You've got two solid strikers, very solid wingers, very solid everywhere. I think the back's... Uh, a little bit of an issue, um, but really there's still three or four players who can play in every position, so I've got no sort of problem with that uh, at the moment. So before we quick look at the tactics and the dynamics, let's quickly look at the development centre, which again is a bit of a new feature for the mat uh, for the game, and that'll just show you a few of the players that will be, uh, or could be, some of the better players at the club uh, in the future. So you've got Jaden Braff, Eric Garcia, as mentioned before, uh, Taylor Harwell, Bellis, this is looking good, you've got two centre-backs who uh, could be star players, that's good to see. And, uh, yeah, you can see how your players are getting on uh, at loan. So you can make sure, say, if, uh, what's his name? Eric Garcia. If we went out on loan to a club, you could look, oh, he's doing well. Maybe I could bring him into the first team next year. Uh, so that is definitely a good feature. L uh, well, not last before, Lee. Uh, not last, but not least. We've got two features to have a look at yet. We've got Dynamics and the Team Tactics. Let's have a quick look at Dynamics. Uh, Dynamics is fine at the moment. We've got two team leaders uh, including Sergio Aguero, in terms of you've got your captain, your vice captain, and then you've got Aguero. So you've got three team leaders, um, but it's quite crucial that both the captain and vice captain are reaching the end uh, of their career. And to be fair, Sergio Aguero is not that far behind him at the age of 31. Uh, so you have got a little bit of a struggle on your hands. Of course, you're going to have players like Kevin De Bruyne and Raheem Sterling leading the club in the future. And I think probably Raheem Sterling would be a good captain choice. Uh, he's a very solid player. I'm not a big fan of him myself, really, because I'm a Liverpool fan. I'm a little bit jealous that Man City have got an excellent player in Raheem Sterling. Uh, but his leadership qualities aren't great, to be fair. Um, but I think that's something that could be developed. Um, and I think that he'd be a good voice for the team. Somebody would be there um, for a long time. Alternatively, perhaps somebody like Edison or De Bruyne. Um, but, yeah, you've got a lot of players who could be captain in the future. But I think for now, you are just about okay. But you want to make sure you keep your three players at the top happy. Um, and probably the likes of Otamendi, De Bruyne, Stern and Silva as well. And to be fair, most of these players in the influential zones are going to be your first team players. So you're not going to struggle too much. The only one I'm worried about a little bit is Fernandinho. Because of course you've got Rodri who's coming and really will probably take his spot. So the tactic I'd probably look to play with with Man City is probably the control possession tactic. Now you can use your different attacking width and all that sort of thing. Uh, your in possession, in transition and out of possession tactics as you wish. Um, I would go with an attacking tactic and not really change this too much. Maybe have a little bit more direct passing and higher tempo. But you can change that as you please and, and what you think Man City should play like. But that's absolutely fine for me. Uh, nothing too ridiculous. And the starting lineup, I think, would look pretty good like this. We're going to put Carl Walker in instead of Cancelo. So we'd have Edison, Walker, Stones, Otamendi and Sinchenko. Um, again, obviously, we've got Laporte who's injured for uh, five or six months. So ordinarily, we'd put Laporte in there. 
ahead of Otamendi. Uh, and Sinchenko at uh, left back, you of course can rotate him with Mendy. Uh, Rodri gets in in defensive uh, midfield. We've going we probably have a deep line playmaker. Uh, for Rodri. Of course, you've got De Bruyne, who are probably put on as attacking uh, uh, advanced playmaker, and David Silva as well as probably another deep line playmaker or maybe a roaming playmaker. Then you've got your two wingers, who probably really have to be uh, Bernardo Silva and Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling seems to like the inverted winger role, so we'll go with that for him. Um, and then you've got Sergio Aguero, who likes to be an advanced forward, so we've either got Aguero or, of course, Gabriel Jesus, who can play up front, and really those two can just rotate. As you please, or you could get rid of the defensive midfielder and play a 4 triple 2 uh, and play them both together. What a strike force that would be. But of course, a big player as well, looking into the future, is Phil Foden. He plays in the middle, uh, attacking midfield centre. So again, if you wanted to get him into the team, perhaps you'd drop your defensive midfielder and maybe put Pope Foden in there as so. But as I've said, this is going to be a short snap, a, a, a short snap, a short snippet um, on what I do in Man City this season. But... We've only got 10-15 minutes, so I can't go into massive detail. But if you guys have got any suggestions on what you do in Man City, let me know down in the comments. As I said, this is this sort of content is made to help you guys. So, uh, basically, speak between yourselves in the comments uh, and see what you guys can come to. Um, if you've got any issues about FM20 in general or with Man City, let me know down in the comments. Uh, and I'll try and help you as best I can. But hopefully this has been of some help some guidance to some of you guys who aren't so sure what to do in Man City and hopefully I've gone over some of the players uh, some of the key people in the squad who to look after etc etc maybe looking at replacing a centre-back but if you've got any centre-back ideas maybe a better one than Kim Pembe let me know down in the comments I still can't pronounce his name and there's no point trying to pronounce it for any longer because that is about it for this video I hope you guys have enjoyed there's going to be plenty of team guides going with all the teams in the Premier League so make sure to stick around to see those but until then, thank you very much for your company. Make sure to also check out my bait to save Liverpool again. This will all be in the end screen. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for daily FM19 content. I've said FM19, what a criminal. Subscribe for daily FM20 content on the beta. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys later on. Goodbye for now.